Hey guys, welcome back to the arena. We're here for another day of grinding on ladder. If you're new to my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. And if you do end up liking my content, please consider subscribing and maybe sharing it with a friend of yours. For my returning viewers, thank you so much again for coming back and supporting me. It really does mean the world to me. There will be a deck list in the description, both on moxfield.com and untapped.gg, as well as a link to all of my other playlists. So if you wanna check those out, feel free. I have both constructed and limited content there. And then I do want to give a shout out here to my members. So thank you so much again for becoming members and helping to support my channel. It really is a great way. If you do want to give back um, for as low as $1.99 a month to get early access to my content. And here is exactly how you do that. If you would like to become a member and help support my channel, you can do so. Just click on the join button right next to where it says subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Um, or if you would like to just support my channel just on a one-time basis, you can also click the super thanks button uh, here right on the, uh, also right under the banner here for the video. So these are both great ways to support the channel. I really appreciate you guys and I couldn't do this without you. So thank you guys so much again for your consideration. All right, let's get into some games. Okay, so let's jump in. So with the changes from yesterday, um, Go ahead and check out the uh, last video here in the playlist if you like. Um, I really am happy with where Boros Humans is at. Uh, adding the removal back in has been huge. So having access to a playset of Rukathar and March of Otherworldly Light, as well as a singleton here of Get Lost, and then the Iganjos, um, feels good. So I think this is where I sort of want the deck to be. We're currently Diamond 2 and still climbing, so let's jump into some games. I do feel like this is kind of like the best of like the mono white humans deck with the addition of Imidane's Recruiter, just to kind of give it haste. So yeah, really happy with it. Okay, opening hand looks great. Got a nice turn one, turn two, turn three play here. So we'll go ahead and lead out here with reinforcements just to set up Night Aaron on turn three. Um, okay, they've playing Spar's headquarters. Potentially could have counters. I think I think I'm gonna main phase the reinforcements just so we don't run into counterplay. Okay, it looks like we're just up against um, Domain, so that's fine. Now we can go Vanguard into Knight Errant and try to set up before they can get uh, Board Wipe online. Okay, and I think we just want to pick up Warden in case we don't draw land so we can use all of our mana next turn. The other consideration here is grabbing reinforcements so that if they do have a board wipe, we can set it up so that we can get like lethal on the following turn by holding up reinforcements. And there might be something to that actually. Let's see, we've got next turn we'll have uh, with Vanguard. 6, 9, 10, 13, 17. So not quite lethal. Yeah, I think I'm just going to take the reinforcements as the second card here. Like, there's a chance we draw a land and get to play double Vanguard. Um, if they don't have, like, the temporary lockdown this turn. Okay, that also works. So... Does this give us lethal? Let's see. Four, seven, nine, twelve, eighteen. Yeah, this does give us lethal, but they probably have one removal spell here for Vanguard. So I think we just actually play it safe here and run out the Vanguard this turn. Just because we're expecting them to have a piece of removal here.
This way we can hopefully get like the last couple points in with a recruiter on the following turn. And now if they haven't got um, depopulate, we're in a really good place. It's pretty much depopulate or bust here. go for it here because they probably just have like even two pieces of removal I don't think does it so I think they're still dead, right? Unless they've got another piece of removal. So would we have still... I guess, like, what we could have done there is play Vanguard instead. It might have been the more disciplined play to play Vanguard there. Because then we'd have Recruiter for the following turn. But yeah, if they don't find... Um, yeah, if they didn't have it that turn, that was going to be it. Yeah, Emperor's not going to do it. So it ended up working out, but I think that, yeah, potentially we should have done Vanguard the second time also, just knowing that they could have like double removal to stop us from winning. I forgot about Tidebinder. But basically just kind of get in the habit of like trying to have your recruiter be like the very last card that you play with no possible outs for the opponent. looks great and I like early access to March here just in case we're up against like a super aggressive deck okay Demir or possibly Esper We'll play the planes first here just to hold back Cavern in case they want to hold up like counter mana. Like if we can do that instead of like them having like a, an actual play on their turn, we kind of wasted their turn, which is great. So let's just lead out here with Officer and then I think probably run into the double Officer. I guess if they if they're like um, Demir control and they have like uh, the three mana board wipe, it would have been awkward. But they have Celestis, probably trying to set up for maybe like um, oh, what's the word? The five mana Black Wrath. We can just march this though, and I think that's probably the move. And we'll probably lose Cathar here because March is going to be a little bit more effective.
Deadly cover up, that's what I was thinking of. Or I guess if they're Esper, then like maybe they have um, Sunfall or something like that. Pretty sure they were trying to go for Deadly Cover Up though. And now we can push for enough between this turn and the next turn to get get it done. So even if they board wipe now, we'll have the three from Recruiter to get it done. So yeah, getting rid of their um, Celestis was instrumental. Nice. Yeah, so I guess if they had like the path earlier they could have, they must have just drawn it. Okay, hand looks good. Now we're just hoping to like draw into Night Errant or something like that. This could be the Ninja's deck. I mean like with Basic Island, I think it's probably the Ninja's deck. Slash like Zoetic Glyph. All right, let's get the reinforcements in and then we can try to trade for Siren here. Or at least offer the trade. Partially because we don't want them to like, to enable ninjutsu. Okay, duelist. Do we march that? I don't know that we do. I mean, I guess we can march for March. Let's find out what's coming up. Rokathar is pretty good. I don't love giving them selection though. And they can do like Prof's Eidetic Memory and start setting up with Duelist. Otherwise we play Veteran here. Hmm. Yeah, I think marching for March here is actually, is fine. Just kind of keep them off balance. And just denying their card selection. Okay, well, Brew Cathar is a pretty nice pickup. That's also a great pickup. Do they go for Glyph this turn is the question. Hmm. 
So we could just march here. Um, I think we probably just march. We could also push with Recruiter, but I don't like this block here, obviously. Um, we could also just play Veteran and try to set up a little bit. We don't necessarily need to get rid of this Ginger Brute just yet. Yeah, I guess, actually, we could also just uh, let this flip and then march on their turn. That feels pretty good, too. If they have bounce, it's kind of annoying. I guess let's attack and see what they do. Yeah, I think let's just hold for, let's get this to flip and then hold for their turn. Machine over matter, is that just like a bounce spell basically? I think we want to see maybe if they attack with Ginger Brute and then we can bounce the duelist. Yeah, I think, it, let's just wait and see what they attack with. So we're at 22, so if we can get them to attack with Ginger Brute, then we can bounce the, or we can uh, march the Duelist. Okay, they didn't fall for it. Yeah, let's just get rid of Duelist. Could also get rid of the profits. That's another consideration. Okay, that was a nice pickup. Yeah, so now we can go warden plus veteran and then set up for recruiter. I guess if they have bounce, they could potentially sort of blow us out here a little bit, but let's attack first. We also could have held one back to try to get Warden going again. That, that might have been better, actually. Because then we could scry and we were kind of not missing the point. So yeah, maybe not attack with one of those creatures. So they can get Foundry going here. Um, we get his Brutal Cathar again this turn. If we push with Recruiter, 
see they block here and I guess probably recruiter take two four six eight go to one feels pretty good they do get some stuff back though I think I'm just gonna set up another turn here Yeah, glad I did. That's another good draw. Question is, do they attack or not? <sighs> okay, so if we Imidane's recruiter, they block here and here, take three. Five, seven, nine, they're dead. That works. Nice. Yeah, it's a fun deck to play, but they're really squirrely and they have a lot of uh, sort of tricks. So just kind of like take it a little bit slow. Make sure you've got the kill before you go for it. Opening hand looks great. Nice one, two, three. Do we want to save the Aganjo here and play out the Forge? Um, I don't think so. We've only got two land. I think I'd rather just keep life total high. Just in case we're up against like mono red. Question is what version of blue white are we up against? Is it like the combo deck, the reanimator, blue white control? All right, I guess we'll just eat the counter here. Um, 
no real sense in trying to tease it out with veteran. Although I suppose like if they have hmm like if they have uh, lockdown on three, losing our vanguard sucks. But I feel like we kind of just gotta like go pedal to the metal against this deck. The most current version only runs two copies, so I think we just eat counterspell here. If they've got it, they've got it. Oh, okay, very different deck. Soldiers, haven't seen that in a long time. So now we're probably looking at um, reinforcements here, I would guess. So I think we just play this and sit. Yeah, I think we have to test for reinforcements, unfortunately, because it's, it's a pretty nice, I mean, we definitely don't want to attack with the officer and like lose it to half a card and Vanguard, Losing it there still sucks a lot, so I think we just sit. Okay, totally different deck. Have not seen this one. We could Cathar here. Like, Recruiter's pretty good too, though. They might even have like extra copies of this in their hand too, so I think we've just wanted this recruiter like a couple turns in a row and just get it done. Yeah, I think we just keep pushing recruiters here. Okay, so they kill Vanguard, eat the veteran, and then take six. Or just block, I guess. That works too. We could just go, problem with Vanguard is Vanguard doesn't let us do a whole lot. I guess we can push the next turn if we play Vanguard this turn, but I kind of like playing Cathar here because if we draw into land, we can double spell next turn. And if they don't do anything, then this flips and that's a decent threat. So I think it's actually a brutal Cathar here. If they try to sit and not play spells, then we'll have a flipped Cathar.
Do we want to trade with Commando? If we draw land, like we're, we're threatening nine next turn. So I feel like we don't make this trade. Okay, wrong kind of land, unfortunately. Oh well. We could technically, I guess, like recruiter this turn. It just seems like a little bit of a waste. Um, well, we're pushing five. It's not a lot. I think I'd rather just play Vanguard. We can still push for two. And then, like, next turn, if we draw and do something else, we can, like, double spell and push for a lot. Plus, now if they block, we can just recast. Now I think we trade with Commando. Okay, that was a nice draw. Um, yeah, I think the play here is we go for train troops and try to slow roll this. We could also go for like Knight Errant here, but Knight Errant for one is not particularly exciting. And I think we actually also offer this trade here. I mean, like they could have another Giada. What else do they have that has Flash? I suppose they could play like a Tishana's Tidebinder. I guess I'm okay if they trade with, with this here. Like we're happy pushing damage. Yeah, that felt pretty good. Oof, lockdown is rough. Yeah, that was a beating. Okay, that's pretty good though. So if we play Night Errant, are we just dead? Like if they have another trick, obviously we are. We can't quite push for lethal this turn, so yeah, I think we just go for it and hope it works out. Ooh, that's a beating. Oh well, so it goes. But yeah, I think I played it the I think not knowing what deck it was from the beginning, I played it how I wanted to, so I feel like we did the best we could there. This is not a very common deck though, so I don't expect to run into this that often on ladder. Yeah, opening hand looks great. Okay, up against World Souls Rage.
Brutal Cathar is at least nice, so in case they have Nissa on three, be ready for it. It's like Nissa is definitely like the most dangerous card they have in their whole deck. I mean, well, World Souls Rage technically, but it's the card you want to go for. Yeah, lockdown is annoying. Um, okay, let's just go for Adeline this turn then. Probably setting up for a big board wipe here. Um, so definitely think we swing out. We can try to get Knight Errant going. Let's see, is it worth the extra two points of damage to swing out? I think maybe it's better to go for the Knight Errant play. Actually, we're missing four points of damage this way. Yeah, maybe we just swing out here. Like, knowing that they have lockdown and we don't have an answer for it, I don't really want to play into it with the Copper Coat Vanguards. Like, if we went double Vanguard here, we could push a decent amount of damage. Like, they block here and then they take... 4, 8, 12? It's decent. So maybe we just go for, I don't really want to go for Brutal Cathar though, because like if they have something we need to deal with, I think we just swing out. And then I think we just, do we Night Out for one or for two? Probably just one. Okay, that was a nice pickup. So now, like, I mean, their their lockdown is still pretty good because they hit three three targets with it. But like, we're trying to force them to have like the actual board wipe. See if they run counters. Okay. Problem is we don't have the uh, the recruiter in case they've got board wipe here. Nice. No board wipe, that'll work. All right, so yeah, this is a pretty good session. Ended up going four and one, 80% win rate for this session. Uh, let's take a look at the larger stats of the deck. Okay, so overall we are currently 65% win rate, 17 wins, nine losses. Um, the most recent version of this deck has done really well. I think it's at 80% win rate in total. Yeah, it's at 80%, uh, eight wins and two losses after basically putting in all the removal that this deck needed. So this is kind of more sort of accurate here, but you know, with all the iterations of the deck, we're at 65%. So really happy with it actually. Um, and uh, yeah, 
We'll see you here in the next one. Keep climbing. And thanks again, guys, for watching. You guys are awesome.